Welcome back everyone to Behind Eric Basketball on YouTube. Every season, there are major changes in the offseason when it comes to bringing in a new head coach to a program. In this video, I'm going to talk about the 10 college basketball head coaches who are on the hot seat for this upcoming 2020-21 college basketball season. Now, the main reason why these coaches appear in this list is because they have been underachieving and have coached their program to multiple seasons without much success. Also, these coaches just have not been able to raise the bar given the expectations of the program. So as of the recording time of this video, there have been many mid-major head coaches who have been fired in the 2020 offseason. However, there's only been one power conference head coach who has been fired so far in the 2020 offseason, with Danny Manning being fired from Wake Forest in place of Steve Forbes of East Tennessee State to take over. So with that being said, expect a laundry list of firings to occur in the 2021 offseason. Because some of these programs chose not to fire their head coach this offseason due to COVID-19 and not being able to meet face-to-face. So before I get into this top 10 list, I'd like to mention three head coaches that just missed the cut on this list here. As these are the three head coaches. Jim Engels of the Columbia Lions. Chris Collins in the Northwestern Wildcats, and Dave Leto of the DePaul Blue Demons. And now we will get started here with a top 10 list of coaches on the hot seat. Number 10, Josh Pastner of the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Georgia Tech has the potential to do really well this season, which should be enough if they do the save Pastner. And that's, of course, if everything does go according to plan. The Yellow Jackets will get back their top three out of four scores for this upcoming season as they look to not disappoint. Georgia Tech was able to improve under Passner last season. They finished with a 17-14 and record and won against number five ranked Louisville. Georgia Tech had a winning record with nothing to play for either because they were ineligible for last season's NCAA tournament. Now, Georgia Tech did happen to show progress as well last season. They happened to win their last nine out of 12 games. Passner has a career record of 65 wins and 67 losses. He does have a great opportunity here, though, to take the Yellow Jackets to their first NCAA tournament in 2021 in over a decade if everything does happen to come together for this season. But if Georgia Tech is lackluster and struggles once again and goes back to having like a 6-12 and record in the ACC, like seasons number 2 and 3 for Passner, then Passner's hot seat will be even hotter in the next offseason. Now we'll take a look right now. Number 9 is Dave Paulson of the George Mason Patriots. So gone are the days of George Mason making the NCAA tournament and being an 11 seed in the Final Four as a Cinderella like they were back in 2006. 20-plus win seasons were the norm under former head coach Jim Laranega back in the 2000s. But in Polson's five seasons so far, George Mason, he only has one season of 20 wins. That was with a 20-14 and 14 record back in the 2016-17 season. The last three seasons for George Mason look like this. They had a 16-17 and 17 record in 2017-18. They had an 18-15 and 15 record back in 2018-19. And a 17-15 and 15 record, which included a 5-13 and 13 conference record as past season in the A-10. This was a team last season that started out with a record of 11 wins and one loss, but they eventually fell apart once they got into A-10 play as they just could not compete against the top teams in the conference. Season 6 here for Dave Paulson will just have to be closely monitored if George Mason wants to keep him in the future. Now we'll take a look here. Number 8 on the hot seat happens to be Terry Porter, head coach of the Portland Pilots. So back in, 28, uh, back in 2016, Eric Ravino was fired from Portland after posting a season with a 12-20 and 20 record. Ravino coached Portland for 10 seasons. He posted four seasons with a winning record. The next four seasons after Ravino's firing have just been terrible under Porter. The most wins that Portland could ever reach under Porter so far has been 11 wins in a season. Porter's first four seasons look like this. He went 11 and 22 back in 2016-17, 10 and 22 in 2017-18, 7 and 25 in 2018-19. In this past season, he had a record of 9 and 23. The last two seasons in conference games in the WCC are just abysmal. Portland has only one win out of 32 conference games in the regular season during the last two seasons of Porter. According to Oregon Live, Porter has currently one season left in his contract, and the University of Portland isn't willing to make a change this offseason. So I just wish Terry Porter here the best of luck in the future, and especially for this upcoming season here for the Portland Pilots. Now I'll take a look now. Number seven 
on the list of head coaches on the hot seat. This one happens to be Tim Jankovic of the SMU Mustangs. So SMU's basically fallen off the college basketball map lately. They did have a few strong seasons in there in the mid-2000s. Jankovic happened to coach nine games for SMU back in 2015. He took over for former head coach at SMU, Larry Brown, after Larry Brown was suspended the first nine games to start off the 2015 season. Jankovic went 9-0 to start off for, for SMU, and then after that, he was hired in the 2016 offseason, after Brown stepped down that offseason. But during his first full season as a head coach, Jankovic posted a 30-5 record, where his team went 17-1 in America. That was back in 2016-17. Not too bad there, of course. But however, in his second and third seasons as head coach, SMU struggled, going 17-16 back in 2017-18. And they had a losing record back in 2018-19 with a 15-17 and 17 record. This past season, SMU went 19-11. and 11. They finished at 500 at 9-9 and 9 in the American. Now, according to ESPN, Jakovic is currently under contract through 2021. And this season here, season number five for Jankovic is going to be a big one. This upcoming season will dictate if SMU does want to stay with Jankovic or move on. As this season, SMU has a legitimate shot at getting an NCAA tournament bid if everything does happen to come together. As the Mustangs will get back their entire roster with six seniors and four juniors for this upcoming season. And they have zero sophomores or freshmen on their roster for this season. So big season coming up for Tim Jankovic for SMU. Now we'll take a look here. Number six on the list happens to be Danielle Marshall, the Central Connecticut State Blue Devils. So the former UConn star in the early 1990s and the ex-NBA player Marshall just hasn't really had much success as a head coach in his first four seasons so far at Central Connecticut State. CCSU has finished in last place for the past two seasons in one of the worst conferences in all college basketball, the Northeast Conference. Marshall has a coaching record of only 35 wins along with 88 losses, and last season was his worst yet. They had a record of 4-27, and and Central Connecticut State happened to be one of the worst teams in all college basketball last season. They happened to lose by 46 points to UMass as well. Historically, Central Connecticut State hasn't always been terrible. They went to the NCAA tournament three times back in the 2000s, where they posted three 20-plus win seasons, where they won the NEC back in 2000, 2002, and 2007. Marshall's time, though, at Central Connecticut State, it has just been nothing but shaky and underwhelming. In November 2017, Marshall was suspended for a month by the university due to a personal matter. Now, according to the Hartford Current, the matter also resulted in one of Marshall's assistant coaches to be placed on leave, along with Marshall being suspended for the first seven games of 2017. Now we'll move on. Head coach in the hot seat here as we take a look at the Power Conference one. It happens to be Mike White of the Florida Gators. So Mike White's coming off just another underachieving season at Florida. Florida had top 10 potential heading into last season with a pickup of the number one graduate transfer in the 2019 offseason with Kerry Blackshear Jr. The Gators were ranked in the preseason top 25 poll in 2019 at number 6 to start off. But one month into the 2019-20 season, Florida was nowhere to be seen in the top 25 and never returned. By the end of last season, the Gators found themselves in the bubble conversation once again for a second season in a row, and they finished with a record of 19-12. and 12. The Gators have been able to make it to their last three NCAA tournaments, but Florida should be at the top of the SEC not towards the top, middle, or the middle. The past two seasons haven't been an indication, basically, of being one of the top teams in the conference, as the last two seasons look like this. In 2018-19, Florida went with a 9-9 record in the SEC. They finished 8th in the conference and somehow was able to grab an at-large bid. In 2019-20, this past season, the Gators finished with a record of 11-7 in the SEC. They finished 5th in the conference, which they had potential to be a top three team and at the very top of the conference going into this past season. But it's just difficult shoes to fill when Mike White follows up after former head coach Billy Donovan 
with winning national titles for Billy Donovan, but Mike White just hasn't been able to compete here at like a high, high le level and be like a top 10 team like the Florida Gators were back under Billy Donovan. So the Gators just haven't really been able to get hot and put together like elite seasons with consistency in them. So if next season is of any indication here of another underwhelming season, poised for the bubble once again with high hopes for Florida, then there's a good chance that Mike White might be out of the door um, as head coach here for the Florida Gators. Now we'll move on. Number four on the list, we take a look at another power conference head coach is Richard Patino in the Minnesota Golden Gophers. So Patino has only been to two NCAA tournaments in his seven seasons as head coach in Minnesota. In the last three seasons, the Golden Gophers have not been able to finish above 500 in the Big Ten. That includes a 9-11 and record from 2019, which Minnesota did happen to make the 2019 NCAA tournament. This past season, the Golden Gophers had a losing record. They struggled with a difficult Big Ten schedule. They went 15-16, and 8-12 and in the Big Ten. Former Minnesota head coach, Tubby Smith, he happened to tally in five 20-plus win seasons in his six seasons as head coach at Minnesota. But Richard Patino has struggled following up Tubby Smith here as Patino's only been able to record three 20-plus win seasons in his seven seasons so far as a head coach for the Golden Gophers. Under Patino, Minnesota just hasn't been able to show a model of consistency. They put together one good season, follow it by one down season. And of course, in a tough Big Ten conference, once again, with the front runners expected to be Iowa, Wisconsin, Michigan State, Ohio State, Rutgers, and Michigan for this upcoming season. The Golden Gophers are going to have to just basically surprise some of these teams and try to squeak out victories as much as possible this season and play well in a challenging Big Ten conference to possibly save Richard Patino's position here as a head coach for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. I got him at the hot seat here at number four. Now we'll take a look here. Number three on the hot seat happens to be Jeff Neubauer, head coach of the Fordham Rams. So this is shocking here. I have no clue how in the world Neubauer, Neubauer hasn't been fired yet. After a promising season in year one for Neubauer, which resulted in 17 wins in a trip to the 2016 College Insider Tournament, Fordham has basically fallen down a cliff ever since. The Rams have finished last in the A-10 for the past three seasons. Under Neubauer, Fordham only won four conference games in the 2017-18 season, three conference games back in 2018-19. In this past season, they only happened to win two conference games in the A-10. As Neubauer has a record of 60 wins and 97 losses at Fordham. And things for this upcoming season aren't looking so well either as Fordham is projected to be at the very bottom and possibly last in the A-10 conference. And I wouldn't be shocked if they have another rough season here at the dead last very bottom of the A-10. We have two coaches left in the hot seat here. Taking a look at number two. Happens to be Jim Christian, head coach of the Boston College Eagles. So Jim Christian here so far in Massachusetts, which is my home state, by the way. It's basically all about the professional sports teams in Massachusetts. The weakness here, of course, the Massachusetts college basketball scene. The weakness is for real as far as teams struggling in the state of Massachusetts for college basketball. In Christian's six seasons as head coach for Boston College, he has only put together a record of 75 wins and 119 losses. While he's only had one winning season as a head coach with a 19-16 and 16 record, record back in 2017-18. Under Christian, the Eagles have just been abysmal in the ACC. They have gone 25-85 and 85 for an ACC winning percentage of only 23% wins in their conference since Christian has taken over. There's absolutely no excuse either for the lack of talent either in the past for Boston College. Christian has managed to coach a couple of uh, top 100 recruits in BC, still had a tough time winning games. As Christian happened to coach Kai Bowman, who now plays in the NBA for the Golden State Warriors, and last season, Boston College had on their roster Jarius Hamilton, who happened to be a top 60 recruit in the class of 2018, but Hamilton ended up transferring this offseason to the Maryland Terrapins. It is just embarrassing enough when Boston College couldn't even beat UMass Lowell in 2015, and they needed overtime later in the month of 2015 to win against New Hampshire. 
Boston College will be bringing in a new athletic director for this upcoming season. If the Eagles don't have a major turnaround for this season, well, there's a good chance that Jim Christian will be out the door. And now we are down to one. The hottest seat out of all of them for this upcoming season for a head coach happened to be this one. Shaka Smart of the Texas Longhorns. And this season's going to be a make-it-or-break-it season for Texas. Last season, it looked like Smart was going to be fired from Texas. In mid-February, the Longhorns sat with a record of 14 wins and 11 losses. They were 4-8 and eight at the time of the Big 12 Conference. That was when they suffered a monster 25 or 29 point beatdown against one of the bottom feeders in the conference against Iowa State. After that awful loss to Iowa State, Smart managed to save his season for Texas, where Texas won the next five games in a row against three NCAA tournament teams that had potential there with West Virginia, Texas Tech, and Oklahoma. In 2015, Rick Barnes was fired from Texas after taking the Longhorns to 16 straight NCAA tournament appearances in 17 seasons. Smart will now be hang heading into his sixth season as head coach for the Longhorns. As he only has two NCAA tournament appearances with Texas, and his team was basically right on the bubble to make it in this past season if the 2020 NCAA tournament had happened. Now this season here for Texas... Everything is laid out perfectly for Shaka Smart to have a successful season. Texas will have zero players leave the program this offseason with a full roster back, as the Longhorns will also be bringing in a new addition with freshman five-star point guard and top 10 recruit Greg Brown into the program. As this will just be embarrassing here. If Texas cannot stay in the top 25 rankings on a consistent basis this upcoming season, and if they happen to receive another NIT bid instead of an NCAA tournament bid in 2021, if they do go to the NIT, then it means they didn't live up to expectations once again, which would basically mean that Shaka Smart most likely would be out the door for the Texas Longhorns. So that's a wrap here to this video. 10 college basketball head coaches who are on the hot seat for the 2020-21 college basketball season. These 10 head coaches on the list are all looking for their best and biggest season here yet for this upcoming college basketball season. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe to my channel. Also, check out all the other great content I have on my channel as well. Thanks so much for watching, everyone, as this is Behind Eric Basketball on YouTube.